government familiarity and expertise in quantifying calamity losses from typhoons flooding over the last 50 years merit its designation to the COP 28's creation of a damage and loss for the next three years, 2025 as an alternate member. This board can be seen as a first step toward the pursuit of climate justice, especially for countries like the Philippines, which has been battered by elements of nature as a result of extreme climate. Our Kenneth Pacente has more. After the participation of the Philippines at the Climate Change Conference in Dubai, President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. shared the country will be part of the board that will manage the loss and damage fund established on the first day of COP28, something that can help the country to respond against the effects of climate change. I am uh, very uh, gratified to uh, hear the news that the Philippines has uh, secured uh, membership on the damage and loss uh, board. Uh, for the year 2024 and the year 2026, serving as an alternate for 2025. This will give us a voice in the management of all the funding that uh, is available around the world uh, to uh, mitigate and to adapt to the effects of climate change. The chief executive stressed that this is a big thing for the Philippines, which is one of the countries most adversely affected by climate change. Therefore, he assured continued support for government from other countries to solve the issue of climate change. The next step that we are hoping to achieve is to host uh, the uh, fund uh, or damage and loss fund here in the Philippines so that uh, uh, because after all we are very much in the mix when it comes to uh, uh, climate change uh, effects. So uh, I think that uh, this is a good development and we'll keep working to make sure that uh, the, uh, the Philippines has a very strong voice when it comes to all the issues of climate change of which we are very severely affected. In the Malacanang press briefing, DENR Secretary Maria Antonia Yulo Loizaga said that over 700 million U.S. dollars pledges have gained from different countries for the loss and damage fund. This is higher than the initial fund expected. That fund was initially expected to raise only an initial about 200 million. We are, as of closing, I understand, over 700 million in terms of pledges to the loss and damage fund, uh, some of which, of course, come from the developed countries such as Germany, but also the UAE and the UK and other countries as well. So that loss and damage fund will hopefully be made operational as soon as possible. And we hope uh, that we will be able to access it with some efficiency, greater efficiency than the other funds that are available. The secretary also pointed out that the seat of the country in managing the fund will be a way for the Philippines to push the needs of the country on environmental matters, including loss of land area, destruction of biodiversity, among others. Is to continue to represent the vulnerable countries in the world that are developing and need to have special consideration given to these countries in order for us to, in fact, drive what should be the appropriate financing available for each of us. Each of the countries have unique needs, and therefore climate vulnerable developing countries, especially island and archipelago countries like our own, need to be able to articulate our needs and have and influence climate policy in this way. So being at the forefront in the, as a member of the board and also hopefully uh, hosting the board here in our country, we can remain in the spotlight for climate vulnerable countries that are in the developing world that need to have this kind of attention in terms of what they need to meet in terms of adaptation mitigation, but beyond that in terms of loss and damage. The Philippines will be part of the board of the Loss and Damage Fund for the years 2024 and 2026, while the Philippines and Pakistan on term sharing again in 2025. It is now being proposed for the World Bank to manage the fund. Separate and distinct from the other funds that the World Bank has that given by their members for the different programs that the World Bank has. So in other words, tagasalo lang po, temporarily, yung World Bank, until we can come up with appropriate structure and organization arrangements for the administration of this fund. The fund will be immediately rolled out once the loss and damage fund board is finalized.
Meanwhile, Secretary Loizaga shared that President Marcos Jr. was awarded with a climate and human mobility recognition by an international office for migration, along with the President of Sudan, for their achievements in handling human mobility and migration as a whole. Kenneth Pasciente for The Nation.